the hostile province of Morrowind, an alien land where towering mushrooms cast eerie shadows over the ash-choked landscape. The residents of this land, the Dunmer, wander about their lives ignorant of the ancient and forgotten secrets scattered across the island of Vardenfell. Long ago, the War of the First Council was fought, and the events at the final Battle of Red Mountain would cause ripples throughout history, which come to a head today. Vorin Dagoth, in possession of the Heart of Lorcan, unleashes a great and terrible power that threatens to devour all hope, and leave naught but despair in its wake. The Blightstorm a malevolent force unleashed by Dagoth Ur claws at the heart of Morrowind. Its dark winds, laden with the foul essence of corruption, sweep across the land, leaving a desolate canvas of twisted landscapes and ashen ruins. The sickly hue of the storm casts an eerie pallor over the once vibrant flora, withering life and infesting the very soul of the realm. In its wake, the Blightstorm bequeaths a haunting silence, a harbinger of doom that chokes the air and heralds the inexorable descent of Morrowind into a nightmarish abyss. In a recent victory, Dagoth Ur has taken control of the Dwemer artifacts Sunder and Keening. He now requires the final artifact, Wraithguard, to fully control and use the Heart of Lorcan. The Dunmer people wander about their lives, without knowing the extent to which their way of life is under threat. The councillors of the Great Houses continue to squabble and jockey with each other for power, and the god kings of the tribunal, Vivek, Almalexia, and Sothasil, feel their divine might wane with each day without access to the heart. The Daedric Prince of Twilight, Azura, seeks a champion in these dark days to bring the Sharmat, the false dreamer Dagoth Ur, to justice. Someone who will fulfill the Nereverin prophecy, and who can right the wrongs of the past and forge a new future for the Dunmer people. This is where his story begins. from the Imperial City's prison, first by carriage and now by boat. To the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? Welcome back to another Morrowind series. Well, not even last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. We're playing today as Samuel, and we'll learn a little bit more Quiet. about Samuel shortly. Here comes the guard. This is where you get off. Come with me. <clears throat> so I wanted to try a few things on this playthrough. Uh, our last playthrough went really well, actually, almost too well, and I wanted to uh, make this one a little bit more challenging. So we'll get into that shortly. This is where they want you. Head down to the dock, and I'll show you to the census office. 
You finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. So our last playthrough, we did a lot of stuff with a high elf. Uh, and you'll see from High Elves, they've got uh, a whole bunch of really, really useful magic skills. Uh, basically everything they have is, is magic related. But this time, we're going to play as a Red Guard. Um, and I'm really looking forward to um, showing off kind of what a Red Guard can do in this game. Um, Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. Sort of like the opposite of the spectrum to a high elf. Um, very much a martial focus character. And we're going to have a lot of fun, I think. Ah, uh, yes. We've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this and the choice is yours. I spent quite a while thinking about what I wanted to do for my class. Um... So we are going to play, um, we are going to play Longblade this time, which is going to be, uh, really good for a, um, for a red guard. And we're also going to take Agility and Endurance, and I'll show you why, uh, shortly. So Heavy Armor, Athletics, give us a bit of an early game speed boost. Uh, we aren't going to pick up the boots of speed for a long time. So... Uh, we take alchemy here. We're not going to go crazy into alchemy this time, but we are going to use uh, it a little bit. And it's useful to see kind of what the um, first potion effect of an ingredient can do. Um, we're also taking alchemy, uh, restoration, enchant, uh, mercantile here. And last one, the last one doesn't matter too much. Uh, I am going to go Alteration, it's kind of like a free pick. Um, I am taking Alteration here because I really like that School of Magic and it'd be useful to have um, a higher chance to succeed when we do get to you know, Levitating, uh, Water Breathing, etc. Um, and also Opening Locks, because um, we don't have that security skill here. Uh, name for this, we're just going to take it as, as uh, a character name, Samuel. Very good. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? So this is a really interesting choice. Um, so for the last character we played, which was a mage class, we played an Atronach, um, which you see here is spell absorption, uh, stunted magicka, so no magicka regen on resting, and uh, an increase your magicka health pool. Uh, magicka pool, sorry. Uh, for this character, we are going to go with the Lady. Um, so the Lady gives us uh, two benefits, but the really important one here is this Lady's Grace here, the Fortify Endurance 25 points. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means shortly. Interesting. Now before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. Okay. So this is the stat screen we've got. We've got Block, Armor, Heavy Armor, Athletics, Longblade. Um, long blade at 50 is kind of the highlight here and we've got our endurance uh, very importantly up at the crazy level of 85 which is going to be fantastic show your papers to the captain when you exit to get your release fee all right so before we move away I'm just gonna hop right over endurance and kind of read it out so it affects your starting health um, which isn't actually true um, it affects your health gain per level, which is really important, and also your maximum fatigue. So you see here our fatigue is at 215. Uh, if you've played Morrowind before, you'll know that fatigue drain is a really uh, awful thing to happen. Uh, basically, uh, fatigue impacts your ability to do basically anything in this game. Um, it also affects the health gain per level, so the earlier that you get it, the better, because it doesn't actually, uh, increasing your endurance later on doesn't retroactively increase your health gain for previous level ups. So we're just going to grab the limeware platter here. Oh, uh, and drop that one. What are you doing? Let the actions go for now. Once you release stuff like that, we get you rested again. Fine. Goodbye. Grab that. And to the next building and you can actually grab stuff. all that stuff. Um, I don't normally do it because it just takes too long. Um, so we're going here, grab all this stuff. Do, 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 do. Thank you very much. 
I should learn how to do combat. All this stuff is ours. First time unlock with a security skill of five. That's pretty good. If you really want to, apparently you can glitch through this little hole here. Um, I don't normally do it, but you apparently can. Kind of bypasses this area here. Cool. That's all done. Uh, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. Take your ring back. Thank you very much. Uh, and one thing you might notice if we talk to this guy here, our disposition's at 52 as a base, which is really quite nice. Pop in here. And before I forget, before I even talk to you, I'm gonna talk to Riska because I always forget to do this. Uh, alright, there we What's go. What's a girl gotta do to get some attention around here? What's a girl gotta do to get some attention around here? Right. Uh, we're actually gonna hold on to the Mesta and Flynn. Now that I think about it. Everything else can go. Six. Pretty good. Let's actually sell these as well. I think we will sell these. Let me drop these. Alright. We'll probably have to buy them there. Actually, hang on. I'm gonna drop them on the floor. I'm gonna buy two of these scrolls and let's try to sell that. Cool. Alright. We're gonna drop them both here. Carry weight's at 8, which is awesome. And we've got 577 gold. <sighs> now... We're gonna do this, and we're gonna get a 5 gold bounty. Pay the court five gold and surrender your stolen goods. Fine. We don't have any stolen goods, so it's fine. We're about to have loads though. Alright, so we're keeping an eye out for that guard up there. Should be able to hear him move. Just finished, just before he uh, came up. Oh, and now we're stuck. Can I jump down here? Yes. Nice. Cool. Carry weight's almost maxed out. That's good. Yeah, now it is maxed out. So we're going to drop... I guess I'll drop 10 of these bottles. Yeah. And we're done. What's that time now? 11am. Cool. We 
making pretty good time. Do, do, do. Oh, we've got Moon Sugar on us. Where's so. that slave? Yeah, not long ago. Here's the trick to trade with any vendor. When you've got Moon Sugar and Skooma on you, is you just drop it down there and then open up again. Pretty silly. Okay, so medium armor we don't want. Uh, light armor we don't want. Uh, the steel shield is heavier and also lower armor rating, so we'll sell that. A lot of these potion ingredients are quite good, but it's going to be a while till we do alchemy anyway, so I'm just going to sell them all. Sweet. And we've got 758 total sold. He's actually out of gold. Um, but that's fine. So we're going to have a look at what we need to get from him. So he's got a Curious, which is wonderful. Uh, we've got Gauntlets. I've got two sets of Greaves here. Um, need... Oh, we need a weapon, don't we? for a long blade iron broadsword is that your best option maybe 13 1 to 18 16 yeah that's probably better i don't think anything else is better than that no cool uh do we have a helmet no no helmet do -do -do -do. Got an iron helmet, no steel helmet. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Cool. And we've got way too much. So we're gonna grab two more of these. Uh um, Take an arm, see the intervention. And. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> now what? Still got loads of gold. Uh, let's take a scroll of vitality. And. Gosh. Oh, Sujama? There we go. There we go. I take two of those. Actually, too much. Well, I'm gonna buy these shoes. Let's take one of them. Oh my god! An honor to be sure. There we go. Do you have no boots? Oh god, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna check. That's fine. Cool. We'll check later. So we're gonna walk around at bare feet. That's absolutely fine. Okay. So we're kind of fully decked out right now. Uh, am I missing anything in town? I don't think I am. So now we're going to head off and do our kind of early game stuff. Oh, we've still got daylight overhead. Uh, also, just double checking um, for myself. We are on the highest difficulty we can. Which should make this a bit more fun. I mean, 
mean, even on the highest difficulty, uh, mud crabs and kwama foragers don't offer too much of a problem for us. Nice. Uh, we've got these, we've got the shoes. And just because I like Processes, uh clothes more than my own. We'll swap them out. I always forget to check what's in there. Maybe I'll check what's in there. Um, so one thing I'm going to do this playthrough, which I didn't do last time, was I'm actually going to hit up all the um, hollowed tree stumps around Sedanin. Uh, but uh, I'm going to do that one last, actually. Um, and the reason for that is that I want to get the spark sword from Tarheel. running a bit too long there. <clears throat> so yeah, your your fatigue kind of determines your chance to hit, or it affects your chance to hit. And so with us being a half fatigue right now, our chance to hit's a little bit lower. Still fine. Okay, here comes Tahil. Scroll of Vicarian Flight. I love this scroll. Fortify Acrobatics for 7 seconds. I'll take it all. Why not? You can be naked and ashamed on the road. If you've uh, not played Morrowind or if you haven't used the scroll of Vicarian Flight at least once, I highly recommend trying it out. Um, I'm pretty sure it's there for uh, for the developers to kind of show just how crazy some of the things you can do in this game are, um, and to give kind of early uh, early and, and new coming players uh, a taste of kind of what's to come, because this game does get pretty crazy. Anyone who's uh, seen Magic Man, we'll, we'll know a little bit about that, you know, spinning around, fighting uh, fighting Dagothur and, and flying around the room at 100 miles an hour. It's pretty crazy. Alright, cool. So we've got our Spark Sword, and we've picked up our first hollow tree stump over there. So we're going to go head over towards the Mentor's Ring. Is that a scrib? There's a scrib in the like in the bog down there. You probably um already noticed so the scrib creatures, the little white like uh uh I don't know, bugs or no, I guess I guess they're like arthropods, right? Um, that that walk around. Um, I never fight them, and there's a really good reason for that. Um, they can actually paralyze you, so I basically always avoid them. The slaughterfish chasing me. Is that it there? Huh? Okay. Um, they can paralyze you. It's only for a really short time. Um. So it's not the end of the world, but if they like chain paralyze you, it just feels really bad. <laughs> and so I just tend to avoid fighting them. They don't go hostile against you, so you can just kind of walk around them. But yeah, mud crabs, uh, kwama foragers, they're kind of your early game targets. Uh, is it this one? 
Yes. Okay. So this is the other sec. 100 gold in this one. Just straight up 100 gold. Um, it's worth picking up. It's not a crazy amount of gold, but it's useful early game when you're trying to scrape together gold to get all the things that you want. Um, on a martial character as well, especially, um, a lot of the uh, kind of items that you want to pick up early are pretty expensive. We've already done the, um, the, uh, is it the House Redoran Vaults? I think we did the House Redoran Vaults last time. And so, uh, we're probably not gonna go for the Daedric item, uh, at level one. And we're not gonna go for, uh, breaking into the vaults at level one and grabbing all this stuff. Because, uh, again, that kind of made the early game a little bit too easy. And it's probably not the way the developers intended for the game to go. So, we'll avoid doing that stuff. We'll play a little bit more legit this time. Alright. So, we equip our enchanted blade because uh, ghosts do require you to use magic in order to damage them. Here he comes. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we should grab the scroll as well. I'm pretty sure these urns always just have uh, bone meal in them, so I don't usually bother. Is that fresh fiber? Yeah. Oh. Should be a scroll of hellfire. That's basically always empty. There is a ring in there this time, which is nice. Uh, speaking of ring, what I will do. Oh, I don't have the ring yet. Another ghost. Alrighty. Do I already restore health these? Got this one. Uh, seems kind of a waste. I'm pretty sure we can we can open this. Uh, okay, I always trip this up. I'm going to quick save here, and I recommend if you're doing this, you quick save as well. I always trip this off and then get hurt by it. Yeah, like that. We've got just enough health to make it count. We'll leave the ashes behind, because it's respectful for the dead. Take the amulet, and let's leave. So the Mentor's Ring is what we have now. It's not particularly useful in our character, and we will swap it out uh, for a better ring later. But for now, it's all good. So the Mentor's Ring is very useful for a magic-based character. It offers uh, plus 10 to intelligence and to willpower, I believe. Yeah. Um, in our case, that's... Uh, I mean, it's a massive upgrade in our case, but we're also not going to be using those skills. So it's sort of wasted on us. But that's fine. We'll roll with it for now, because it's the earliest kind of ring that you can get that's not the uh, Fargoth's ring. Alright. Let's walk up to this mud crab. Give him what fall. Oh, and remember to swap out the enchanted blade for something else. If you watched my previous series, you might notice that um, I never died <laughs> in my previous series, um, and I also never really quick saved. 
And the reason for that is that I intended my last playthrough to actually be a permadeath playthrough. Um, which it turned out it was, because I never died. Uh, this time, I'm not putting that limitation on myself. I'm expecting that we will die at some point. And that's absolutely fine, and also expected. So I will be quick saving before uh, particularly dangerous situations, just so that we can make sure that we don't lose too much progress. Uh, and now I've kind of hit a point where the seller doesn't have enough gold, huh? Oh, that's interesting. What do we have here in terms of scrolls? This is kind of one of the problems with uh <laughs> with looting the warehouse is that there's not enough gold in town to actually sell your stuff. Um, okay. What do I want here? It's high value that's cheap. Sorry, high value that's uh not heavy. I guess scrolls are a good choice. Fortify Intelligence. Uh, sorry, Fortify Personality. It's kind of useful. Yeah, we'll just do that. That's fine. An honor to be sure. Pick up the scuba again. Uh, okay. So we've got the tax record. Let's go do Orin Gilneth. Just gonna wait for our fatigue to regen. In fact, I can. Uh, I could wait, but I want to do everything in the first day in Sedanine, so I won't wait. Health is really low, um, but this is absolutely fine because he only does fatigue damage until you hit zero fatigue. And we'll never hit zero fatigue in a fight against him. So that's fine. We'll take that book. At some point, we'll sell it. Anything good in here? Eh. I don't want these goblets. Now we can use this bed here. I'm going to avoid resting for a while. Uh, basically as much as I can early game. I'm going to avoid resting. And the reason is that Dark Brotherhood Assassins will spawn. Um, I'm not playing with the, uh, with the patch that actually fixes Dark Brotherhood Assassin stuff. And the simple reason for that is that I don't want to, um... To... Play the game in a way that the devs... Didn't make it, you know? I've got a few, like, graphics mods and stuff, and a little bit of, kind of, tweaking here and there of graphics. Um, but the actual gameplay is, it's untouched from vanilla. There's our health. You gotta charge this person down. You will die. All right, there's number one. Slave key, and we we'll get the next guy. I just need to make sure he sees me. Okay, do I have to go up here for him to see me? You're beaten. Go right over there and open that. He should come up these stairs. There we go. He whiffs the first attack. Oh, Lordy Jesus. Okay. 
got kind of lucky there. So his first attack took off. 34 HP. Yeah. There's one more person in here, which we can probably fight. What is this one before me? I'm gonna free all these slaves, and I'm thinking that with this guy being a red guard, uh, as opposed to a dark elf, he's probably fairly sympathetic to the plight of the beast folk in Morrowind. So I think he would uh, go around and free slaves. All right. Oh no. Oh, okay, this is off to a terrible start. Ah, oh, come on. Alright, reload that. have no uh, I'm gonna hold on to adrenaline rush there's something that I want to do today that will require that almost certainly you will suffer greatly okay there we go so it's kind of about uh, against throwing stars or thrown weapons it's about kind of dodging the first couple getting close enough and then trying to just time your attacks so that you're hitting them um, and staggering them before they can even throw the throw the attacks away. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. I can't carry all this stuff. Most of that's garbage. That's all garbage. There's usually some good stuff in these crates. That barrel's empty. Okay, here we go. Uh, that was a restore personality. Okay. Wait, what was... A oh, gem feeder. Okay. Flynn, grief, an iron right pauldron. We can't take that one. Fine. And we'll grab the two slave keys actually. We're gonna put these slave keys in the barrel here. We don't need them. And they're just gonna weigh us down. Well not weigh us down, but take up space in our inventory. Not weight, but just visual space. Okay, cool. So that's two two little dungeons cleared. We still haven't rested, which is great. And we are at max carry weight. Hmm. Not sure how I'm gonna... I guess I'm gonna have to go back to... Keep moving. A real... I don't think there's anyone else who yes. actually... Uh trade goods with us. Say to me. I think it's all just done Your for real. Should be treated. Find a healer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your story? Yes, I want Sarah. something, friend. Oh my god, everyone's talking all at once. Sensory what overload. Is this about? If you wish to talk, it is really no trouble at all. Ah, the moon sugar again. Well, at least I'm showing this off. Probably got too much actually to I can sell tell. to Revere. I need to figure out, figure out who um, who else will buy it in Balmora. Okay. So we're looking at things in terms of weight. So the armor is a really good one to go for. So basically, the things that are heavier. That carry less value 
probably the things we want to sell to this guy. I could get another scroll of vitality here actually. Ashians, your favorite thing in the previous playthrough. But we don't need them now. I uh, will hold on to the scuttle because it's quite valuable. And I will hold on to those as well. I feel kind of funny that you can just drop your drugs on the ground and they'll I I trade with you. But if they're like hidden on your person, they just won't. <laughs> it's kind of silly. Uh, okay. Do do do. But uh, cool. So if you. Discover Processus Vitellius' body and then come back to this guy before killing Vorin Gilneth. He'll take that 200 gold um, and then tell you to go and basically track down the murderer. By skipping over that interaction with this guy, um, you can keep the 200 gold and also pick up the 500 gold bounty for uh, Vorin Gilneth. So it's pretty worthwhile to just skip over that point and just go straight up and kill Warren. So there we go, we're at 1800 gold. And there's really not any easy way to get much more than that, other than the amount that we're going to get from uh, Fargoth's hiding place and the 25 gold in here. There we go. And we'll get the last one, which is the Shard Axe. And I'm going to really hope that I make this jump, because I always mess up all my jumps in this game. Oh, nice. There we go. Uh, hello? Okay. Cool. And we'll give this person the ring back. Uh, in the last playthrough, we killed her and took the ring. Like, I don't know, Goldon or something from Lord of the Rings. Um, but this time we'll, we'll let her live. We don't need that ring too much. Uh, instead, we'll just loot her things up here. And I think that's basically Satanine done. We're at... 7 p.m. I can't think of anything else that we need to do. That's it. If I've missed anything in Sedanine, uh, please let me know. But I, I think my early game uh, is, is pretty good right now. I did get five boss ring, didn't I? Yes. Okay. He should start walking. He normally goes straight into sneak though. Okay, we just wait one more hour. No? Should watch him at night. Okay. There we go. There we go. He's gone. Cool. It always kind of freaks me out in this game how none of the NPCs sleep and so they just kind of wander wander the streets at night kind of aimlessly and just like stand in one place for for an hour at a time it's very creepy when you think about it all right he's found his tree stump that's where he's stashing all of his goods. 
from uh, Friska. Okay, let's let's see if we can make this jump. Oh, look at that! Ten out of ten landing. Just seeing that mud crap corpse in the background. And that all is belonging to us. And so we're finishing Thedanine with 2,145 gold in the bank and also nearly uh, max carry weight. What happened to you? A healer can I'm listening. Uh, actually, there is actually one thing I can get from. Yes. This is a wondrous encounter. Well, I suppose I could spare a moment or two. Her, uh, her talk about the healer uh, reminded me, so there is one more thing that we can buy, which is actually that one there. Okay, so it says 120. We'll rest, and it's six gold cheaper. It's pretty good. So, like I said, fatigue fatigue plays a part in everything in this game. Um, and actually, with that, we can sell a few things. Okay, let's hold on to that. Okay, well. Uh, we'll grab another Alm TV intervention. Um, it's just really good to be able to get out of jail quickly, as it were. And... Do-do-do-do-do. Yeah, let's get one of these again. And we'll sell that and the silverware cup. There we go. And he is at the, well, I already know, he's at zero gold. So we've got all of his money, and we've got a I'm listening. good spell. I do think he meant well. So we've got a pretty low chance of casting this, but we'll see anyway. Okay, there we go. Very nice. Bit of restoration magic uh, skill as well, which helps. It's one of those skills that we will... Level up a little bit, um, but I'm not gonna go crazy into restoration magic. Why walk when you can ride? You actually get to bow more with max health as well, which is really nice. So there we go. There's episode one. We've completely finished off Sadenine. We've just arrived in Balmora at the wonderful time of 5 a.m. And we've got a very busy day ahead of us. So stay tuned for the next episode. Uh, I'm going to do a similar kind of intro for the next one, just covering off kind of what we what we did in um, in uh, in Sedanin, uh, and a little bit about kind of what the goings on in Vardenfell are in terms of the main quest um, that we aren't uh, currently seeing. So stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching.